Hey everyone, I'm Bradley. Welcome back to the channel, Portly Gentleman. Thank you so much to first and foremost, everyone who's watching and subscribing and liking. It means a ton. Thank you to, to Brewers Hardware. Guys, I, I cannot thank you enough. There's so many other creators you could have chosen to do this. I'm honored and humbled that you chose me. If you would like to learn even more about brewing and equipment, I would love it if you would subscribe and brew along with me. All right, guys, let's jump right into this video. This isn't a full review yet. This is just an overview so you can see what's out there. Again, there isn't any content, I don't think, that kind of shows this bad boy off for what it truly is. Research it, mash it, boil it, ferment it, drink it, analyze it, share it. Home brewing is good. All right, so when you order this guy, you are greeted at your door by FedEx, this big ass crate. Uh, I've not seen many crates with home brewing equipment, so to me, this is something special. I even kind of trip out on the outside of this crate. It's like an oak veneer, so it's got to be some cabinet, seconds, thirds, or fourths. Uh, I just think it's really cool. Obviously, in the crate, it's pretty protected and packed up extremely well. Just get the lid off, and you're good to go. So you're greeted by just a ton of bubble wrap and this expanding packing foam. Uh, mine, I have a couple extras in my kit and I'm unpacking those right now. Uh, I really like this pigtail coil. It's something that's pretty unique. I believe Brewers Hardware makes this guy themselves. Pulling out more of that foam padding, they really seem to take quality uh, in every aspect of their products seriously. There's the blow off cane. This guy is also an optional upgrade that I chose to get. There's that massive eight inch tri-clamp lid. This guy also has a three inch tri-clamp flange and two one and a half inch tri-clamp flanges. It's really something special. Big boy trying to pick this up. This thing weighs 160 pounds. I could not lift it out of the crate. Who knows what I was thinking. Next up, I tried to use a hammer and just thought I could bash it and beat it out of the box. This went on for quite some time. My wife actually came in and stopped me and said, what are you doing? and told me maybe you should work smarter, not harder. So that's exactly what I did. I used my hoist and lifted this big ass unitank out of the crate. This made it super simple. Obviously I could have cut the crate apart, but I didn't want it. And just lowered it down and really get a sense at this point for the mass of it and the scale of it. And when this guy touches down, it's just a solid piece of equipment. So here's a look at this beast up on a table. The, the polish on this is insane. There is nowhere for me to hide. It's a mirror finish and it's nearly flawless. My studio lights do reveal some of the flaws that aren't seen under normal lighting, but I have directed lighting so I could see everything. Here's some of the included components. I'm not using a two inch giant barb fitting, a three inch fitting for a blow off, a cap, several tri-clamps, several inch and a half clamps, tons of stuff. The aesthetic of this unit tank reminds me of a commercial unit. It is completely insulated except for the very top. It also has a cooling jacket designed for glycol. Of course, you could use water. Here's a quick look at kind of that top piece and where the jacket is and the top of the tank that isn't insulated. This area is very small. The jacket actually runs up to the tank's full operating capacity, which is 13.5 gallons. Its max capacity is 15. Here is that top lid with the optional blow off cane that I got. This thing is made by Brew Hardware. It is beautifully welded and beautifully polished. I think this is a must have upgrade. It'll definitely help you out if you're fermenting under pressure or you just don't wanna run a, a flappy hose. Here's that bottom of the blow off, a one half inch tri-clamp. Here's some of the polish work on the legs. It has three legs, which may actually be a downfall of this unit tank, but they are beautifully finished and polished. It was actually pretty hard to find any area on this tank that isn't perfectly finished. On the bottom of the legs is one of the spots I was able to find a weld that wasn't fully polished, not a big deal. This is the optional pigtail sampling coil. It's a sampling valve. It's got pretty good feel, and the coil itself is really cool. Uh, it's definitely a better price than other options in the market. One thing to note, it uses like a Teflon or nylon kind of washer inside to seal up. You wouldn't want to lose that piece. Looks like it's easy to clean and care for. This is one of the cooling ports. They are quarter inch NPT thread. It has two. The bottom one here shown is for the input. The top is the output and they work awesomely in my testing. Pretty straightforward stuff. Just the polish and the shine. I can't say enough. 
My unit is actually a second. It has two dents. This is the only one I could really capture on film. It's not a big deal. They really take quality seriously. This is the racking valve as well as the racking arm. The racking arm, I believe, is standard. The valve is just a pretty simple standard butterfly valve with three points. You pull it and open it and you can lock between closed open and halfway open. The racking arm is really something beefy. It's got a nylon washer in there. It's definitely not going to get clogged. This is a really, really nice item here. The feet of this guy actually look like a 1.5 inch tri-clamp flange. It has some pretty cool caster wheels, which I will show in a future video. Another thing that won't get clogged is this massive two inch dump. Only thing I could say negative about it is the plastic handle. One thing I do not care for. It's definitely going to do the job though. It's massive. Big tri-clamp fange, everything of the highest quality. Here's a look at the inside. It actually has these dimples. That's where the jacket and various layers are attached. The inside is beautifully polished. Definitely as good as polish as I've seen to date from anyone's products. It's truly beautiful. My first step with any new stainless steel is to thoroughly clean it. This guy didn't need a lot of cleaning, but I still ran TSP through it and some very hot water just to make sure that any sort of oils from machining are out of it. I wouldn't want to affect the first batch of beer I put in it. That would just break my heart. So here we are just getting it ready, opening all the valves that are connected up to my pump. The lower piece there is just an adapter. I couldn't find my one and a half inch flange to two inch flange. And just let that CIP ball run. A Riptide pump is absolutely adequate for CIP in this guy. Next, I'm filling it and rinsing it. This is filling with hot water from my HLT. And my second cleaning step will be PBW. I love this stuff. Everyone loves PBW. I think it's a great product. Dump it in, add lots of hot water. I used about two gallons, a gallon and a half. So actually not that much hot water, but a lot of PBW because that's how I do it. Drop in the CIP ball and let this guy whirl away. This is when I first realized how good the insulation is in this unit tank. It did not lose any heat. I normally use a rims tube to heat it continuously in my other tanks. This guy held temperature within 10 degrees very very impressive i haven't seen that from any other tank on the market to date thank you so much for watching this far along in the video it means a ton so obviously this is just an overview but i have a beer fermenting in this bad boy right behind me i plan on making a couple more beers and a lot more content revolving around this unit tank it really is something special in the marketplace it may honestly be the best kept secret in high-end home brewing fermenters I think it represents a great value. Remember, home brewing is good. I'll see you real, real soon.